So welcome to the Treasury Elite Entrepreneur Series. I would like to thank all our viewers and members for supporting this noble cause of Treasury Elite, whose main objective is networking, knowledge sharing, and mentoring. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Abhishek Goenka, founder and CEO of IFA Global and Treasury Elite. We bring in world-class FX and Treasury and financial transformation for companies across India over the last 15 years. And today we have Mr. George Alexander Muthut, MD Muthut Finance. Mr. Muthut is a chartered accountant. Who qualified with the first rank in Kerala and ranked 20th overall in India in 1978? He was awarded as the Times of India Group Business Excellence Award in Customized Financial Services in 2009. He is a founder member of the Indus Entrepreneurs International Kochi, and he is ranked by India Today as the most influential people in Kerala in 2005. In 2013, he received the Dhanam Business of the Year Award and also felicitated by CA Institute. As the CA Business Achievers Award in 2030s, his insight for understanding of gold loan business and professional zeal has been the catalyst behind the company's meteoric rise to the present level and being India's largest gold loan company. Good afternoon, Mr. Muthut. How are you doing today? Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you today as a part of the Treasury Elite Entrepreneur Series. In the next 30-35 minutes, we would love to learn from your experiences. So my first question to you is that I think when I talk to a lot of global entrepreneurs, you know, one common thread with a lot of CEOs would be that they are not doing this just for the money. I would like to ask you one single biggest reason for you to get out of bed every morning and get yourself to work. What is it that drives you today? Or if my I may ask, what is your why? <laughs> yeah. Good afternoon and thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the kind words about me. of course uh, uh, yeah your question is uh, what drives me every day in the morning yeah uh, really uh, i get up uh, during the day time during early morning probably i will be thinking what to what to what to do today what not to do today whom to meet and uh, what are some things which have been bugging me for the last few days which i needs which needs to be Uh, what should we say? Resolved, or maybe a solution found uh, in the next couple of days, and uh, probably also to know what has happened in the con- company, in all its uh, in other divisions, etc. Next day, just uh, curiosity, inquisitiveness to know how the company is faring, has fared the last one day, or probably where I'm not able to get a daily report somewhere else. How things are, so that. Uh, am i really they're testing against me itself am i doing the things right am i okay. able to do things right for the company for the family for the uh, for all of the stakeholders am i able to do things so that is first day in the morning or every day i would like to understand whether actually to myself whether i am doing right things i am doing properly i am doing it fully i think that drives me every day to the probably to the office and uh, of course any uh, physical pain aches etc actually all those disappear when i reach the office <laughs> uh, sometimes my wife asks me you had you had some pain etc how is it that is the time when i return in the evening when she ask me that's the time oh, oh, oh i had something like that but then all those things come back once i reach home also because i am not in the office in the office uh, so many things keep me engaged and i think yeah, that is uh, definitely i also have a passion for working for the company actually for uh, something which our family has started so i would be working please also remember that i am the youngest of the four brothers and all my three other elder brothers are also actively engaged in the business it's just that uh, i ha- i I am the managing director. The others are also managing director, and the eldest brother is the chairman of the company. Excellent. We, we have Excellent. a joint effort. That's it. Excellent. I'm sure this is the mastermind which is driving the Muthut Finance. All the uh, four of you, and uh, I'm sure it's the energy in the company which makes you come to work every day. And you are so much engrossed in the work that probably the no pain actually hits you around. And I think that's something which we hear from a lot of CEOs. So. point taken so uh, uh, in terms of your journey over the last many years i mean the the business has grown the company is widely known uh, uh, 
and it's one of the most trusted brands in India. Uh, if you could highlight some of your major uh, milestones and your three major learnings in business over the last few years. Yeah, uh, this Muthut is a family name. We started as Muthut bankers, the private banking, etc. Many, many years back by my father and his brothers. Probably uh, the finance started 70, 80 years back. But it was a one-stop shop probably in our hometown. And uh, others who wanted to uh, do financial transactions with us had to come to our place. So all those things uh, were a big pain for the people. And it was my father and his brothers uh, who, in 1970s, they thought of why not uh, we branch out also. The earlier thinking was that uh, if you start a branch in a financial services or financial, yeah, fund-based, in a fund-based company, if you start a, a branch, whom will you entrust it to? How responsible would they be? How honest would they be? What type of supervisions can be had? First, all those things which are bugging us. And uh, as a youngster also, young boy also, even from school, we had to go to the office to work. So whatever small work or big work, whatever is there, we had all our brothers had been doing all these things all these years. So we learned the business, but then uh, transformations, etc., started coming when we thought of going out of our hometown. First, we went within the state of Kerala and then to the other states, etc. And then, of course, South Indian states, North Indian states. Those was one of the big uh, transformations which happened in the company. And uh, over the period of time, we were also able to get a set of dedicated people to manage the offices where we were, we could not be physically present. And probably during the time also, we were able to uh, put in some good practices. I'm telling you all 30, 40, 50 years back, we were able to put some good practices by which we could control the, uh, the working or understand the working sitting away from the action. Sure. So that was, that was one thing which we learned and that is one thing which actually helped us also. There were, my father used to say, there were other uh, businessmen also at that time who were not uh, actually willing to uh, let go and uh, maybe open branches for them. I think most of them uh, have just stagnated. This is stagnated. And the second was that uh, uh, our businesses, we were, uh, we had the foresight to actually tweak the business to what the people wanted. So it's not that what we were offering, people were uh, forced to accept. We were able, we uh, were willing to do some changes in the products, in the services, etc., cetera, to, uh, to move the times like. So that is also, some very big, good learnings which we have able to do. And, uh, and the fourth one was that, uh, fourth or third or whatever it was, uh, earlier our companies were all partnership firms where it was a set of partnership firms. But then we start of corporatizing it and making it to a company. And uh, that again, gave a little, a little more stability to the, uh, uh, to the stability to the management of the company. And then we thought of going, uh, maybe uh, going public and listing it also. Of course, it has its challenges, but then uh, because of that, well, one of the reasons uh, we were able to get into the people's mind uh, or we were much better known. And uh, one another, uh, another definitely a seemingly advantage to everybody is that the government standards also had to improve to keep up with all these so many regulators and uh, so so many other people, regulators, etc. And uh, because we are uh, under such a sort of scrutiny, because uh, we are a finance company, we need funding either from the people or from the banks, etc. So trust played a big part. It today plays a big part. See, this is our uh, good, our business strength is not some big buildings and factories our buildings are the trust people have in us. So we were able to keep the trust not, of, not only of our customers or borrowers, but also of our retail investors, the banks, 
and every person who were, was dealing with us. And finally, when we went to as a registered company, we had to or we were uh, responsible or answerable to the large number of shareholders also. So we got listed in 2011, I think. So 2012. Uh, that time, uh, today we have about 50,000 plus retail shareholders also. So that's also a, a big uh, responsibility for us. So all these things keeps us on our toes every time. So whatever decisions today we take, it has a lot of implications, not only for all the stakeholders. So all the people, all the banks, all the institutions, etc., who have lent money to us, we have a responsibility to them. We have a responsibility to people who have taken uh, loan from us, our employees, uh, stakeholders, or shareholders, or family also. So these are some of the learnings that uh, we uh, gradually, over a period of time, we were able to move with the time, whether it was from a partnership to a listed company, the journey uh, from unregulated to regulated entities, and from single branch to multiple branch, etc. So that uh, the team also was able to help us. So the team with us, most of, most of the senior team have been with us for the last 20, 30 years. So that's a big strength we also have. At the that's, a, that's a pretty, pretty interesting journey, right from delegation to the culture, to using technology and building trust for the entire India. And uh, of course, being a listed player is pretty uh, challenging, but at the same time, increases the corporate governance standard, as you rightly said. Now, uh, you have been into financial services now, it has a lot been into action lately. What are the structural changes that you are seeing in the financial services, AMC, or the NBFC business in India? And how do you feel that the Indian industry should gear up uh, by 2025? Or if there is any specific industry practices or best practices that they should learn from the developed markets? Uh, would you be referring to the financial sector and the NBFCs in particular? The overall financial services, NBFC, gold loan yeah. business. Okay, yeah. fine. Finan uh, in financial services, as I said earlier, is mainly the trust which people have, whether, whatever be the product you do. It is a trust, whoever, lender, borrower, customer, anybody, it is a trust people have in you. And uh, trust is quite uh, uh, quite dif uh, difficult to, uh, to attain the trust and very easy to lose the trust also. In Correct. quick time, you can lose it. You can lose it also. So maintaining that uh, credibility, trust, and goodwill, actually, these are some of our core values of honesty, reliability, and that. People, whoever deals with us, definitely have that. And our chairman used to say always, uh, my founder chairman, my father, is no more, to say, when we were dealing with people, please uh, treat it as uh, your, own, your own money and uh, your own money. And uh, do it, don't do, look at only the profit motive, Look at the customer motives so that they come back to you. So, in fact, today, 80% uh, plus of our customers who take a gold loan from us are repeat customers. Excellent. 80% come back to us, if not today, after one month, six months, eight months, whenever they want a gold loan, which people value. Input. The same with the, we have retail investors also in our NCD. There have been people who have been with us for generation. So I think uh, for any industry, whether it is financial industry, definitely in particular, it should be trust which they will have in us. And trust you just cannot get just by saying that I am honest and trustworthy. You have to demonstrate it. And it takes a lot of time. Every action of yours, right from, you know, for, for years, people will be looking, how are they, how are these people? So. Second, uh, for any uh, NBFCs or a small company who is starting an NBFC, not a big one though, but a small company who is starting an NBFC, if you are focused in that business and if you are passionate about it, whatever be the business, there is an opportunity. You should be passionate and focused. And secondly, is what happens is when small business people it's really when they start, etc. When they come in to see some profits, etc., they get excited and think of probably I should do that business which gives me faster profit, quicker profit, etc. Why should why should so what happens is diversion of capital, diversion of funding happens, and that is also in probably in one out of ten or 
or two out of 10, it may succeed. But 80% uh, of the cases, it will not succeed. And you will lose your first business also. So, you know, and uh, also second is some of the business may not look very glamorous. There are glamorous business, non-glamorous business. If you look at a gold alone business, it's not a very glamorous business because you know, we have to deal with small customers, small loans, 2,000 rupee loan, 5,000 rupee loan, and the customers coming to us are not HNI customers who try to borrow on a gold loan. But then it's not a glamorous. But even, even though people feel that it's not a glamorous, if we are passionate about it, it will be fine. Because earlier, if you, uh, maybe 50 years back or 30 years back, if somebody wanted to say, oh, I'm doing a gold loan finance company, gold loan business, why don't you join? You may think, why should I join a gold loan <laughs> See, but then we, over the period of time, uh, definitely we have a role there. We have been able to give little more credibility, a uh, little more status to this business today. Earlier, it was seen as a money lending business, a pawnbroking business, a Marwadi, I don't know how to use that word though, uh, <laughs> such a dialogue business like was what people used to think about this. See, even the regulators at some point of time were thinking that this is a Shylock type of business. We are cheating customers. We are not doing that. We are not doing this. We are not transparent. But then uh, I, at that time, I had only one uh, one argument or two, counter argument to tell these, these people that uh, please, I know you know that all the banks in India also do gold loans. Correct. See, customers have a big choice. They can go to any bank. We have, they do the same business, but if they are coming back to us, it certainly means that they have seen some benefit in coming to us. So if that is so, then it is the people who have already judged it. If we, are, if we cannot be, if we are not transparent, if we are cheating people, how will they come back again? I told you, 80% of the people come back to us. So this is something, the second one is, uh, or I, I just diverted, uh, diverted though, but then the second one is don't think of new businesses always because if you don't have a passion and focus in that one, you will lose focus in this one also. So if you are passionate about your business, probably it may not be glamorous, but if it is good, if people need it, which is making money, you are finally satisfied, please do it, you will be able to succeed. But then at that time, it is at that time somebody will come and say, yes, why don't you start something like that? But in Kerala, uh, people, when they come into, into money, they think of, we will start a film production. Very glamorous. <laughs> yes. In all, 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 overnight, he becomes a film producer. And uh, my uncle used to say, uh, there are a lot of people in Kerala who are small, small film producers. They come from the Gulf. When they come from the Gulf, they make some money. They have some lot of money. They don't know what to do. Some of them, eh? not all of them, some of them. And then some advisor will come and say, why don't we start a film? And unfortunately, what happens is the first film actually succeeds. That is the biggest problem. The first film, small one, if it succeeds, then this fellow gets so excited. He gets into a big, big, very big budget film. He yeah. will he will spend all his money. He will spend, after spending all his money, he'll take a pledges house, he'll take loans, etc. And usually that one will go for a big, big, big flop and the fellow is back to my negative. Correct. If, yeah. he has, if he had failed in the first one, at least he would have stopped there. Correct. Because he, because he succeeded in the first one, he will go to the second one also and lose his shirt also. So diversion is something which uh, usually happens, especially at the smaller level. Sometimes at the higher big companies also. Don't go into very unrelated companies. Sometimes thinking it is a glamour job. The other fellow will be thinking your business is glamorous. You may be thinking his business is glamorous. Correct. So whichever Correct. is good, whichever is making you money, whichever is getting customers, that is the glamour business. No, so rightly said, uh, time and again, this has been proved that people start with one business, they lose focus, they channel a lot of funds in other businesses just because somebody else is doing or the business cycle is in that side. And there are NBFCs in India whom we have seen that they have made such mistakes and they have lost huge amount of money in the last uh, couple of years. 
and uh, lost a lot of name also because of that. And, you know, I was talking to a CEO of a very, very large, I would say, FMCG company. And he said, yes, yeah, simple people, we make wafer thin margins. Uh, we are a no frill business. Uh, we do Kirana stores, and but we are highly profitable and we are the, uh, you know, the stock market loves us. You could have probably guessed the name, but, you know, one of the CEOs is a good friend and we were discussing. And he's like, we don't hire from IIMs and we don't hire from IITs. We hire simple, hardworking people who are whom we can trust, who can put in the supply chains and in the purchasing system, uh, they put their heart and soul and make it a profitable business. And that's the way we do business. There's no glamour business, but we make profits. That's important. And we don't understand any other business. We understand this business very well. So very, very uh, perfect point. And I think uh, this is one of the interesting takeaways for everybody who's been listening to this. So my uh, next question is since Post COVID, I'm sure uh, you would have done a lo lot of innovations in your company to increase the revenue or the wallet share uh, client. You also mentioned that 80% of your clients come back to do business with you. So if you could insist on, uh, if you could share some of the innovations and some of the digital innovations that you have done, your company have done in the recent past, which has helped you to increase the wallet share of clients and also delight the client uh, in the current times. Yeah, thank you. Actually, uh, first forget about increasing the client share, etc. First, retaining the custom, custom client is important. In, in our business, the average tenure of a loan, although it is given for a year, the average tenure of the loan is only four to five months. Correct. So if you look at it from another angle, in four months time or five months time, my whole customers go out. Correct. If I don't do any further lending in four, five months time, that my total book, probably it is about uh, 45,000 crores now, it will come to zero in four months time. That is that's unlike a housing loan which you go for 15 years, etc. It's a three month, four month loan. That's why I said trust is very important because I have to see people coming back to us. Correct. Today, every day we have 100,000 customers coming to our branches to take a loan. We have another 1,000 customers coming to repay the loan. Both of them come every day. That is why the business is moving. If I don't give the 100,000 loan every day, new loans, 100,000 people will come and close, and in uh, five months' time, it will become zero. Yeah. But then, so, so the point is that I have to be innovative first to retain my customers. Correct. To say that uh, they can get a loan even when uh, it is locked down, etc., is what our challenge was initially. Our branches were closed for one month, probably from end of May, I think 25th of March to about 15th, 20th of April, most of the branches were closed, then started opening. So uh, by actually by uh, mid-May, uh, uh, mid-May, yeah, mid-May, all our 4,800 branches were open. Most of our staff were able to come there were challenges that somebody had a corona, he was there. Customer came with a corona. Anyway, it's all behind us now. Last eight months now, we have learned to live with corona. We have learned, I don't think we can wish this corona away 100%. It will be there. We'll have to learn to live with this. That's what is happening now. So, in this time, uh, we encourage our customers to transact online. And probably unknowingly, these people also learned, even small houses, small customers, uh, maybe the lower, uh, uh, maybe SEC3 customers also, they learned to transact online, whether it is by a badapa or whatever, they learned how to do payments and things. So they had to learn. It. So then we encourage them to use that to, to or loan, or to pay interest on our loan. Actually, the staff who are sitting at home, for the first one month, uh, we actually uh, transferred some of the customers at, uh, numbers to them. They were actually talking to the customer and maybe educating him and handholding him how to use the uh, computer to pay his money, etc. So we saw a good increase in the number of customers who were able to transact. Actually, this is only a transaction. The loan origination, the loan, first loan, he has to come with the gold to the branch. To take it also, he has to come to the But the transactions were very easy. 
So he, he did not have to come to the branch to pay any interest. He did not have to come to the branch to maybe take a top up, etc. He could do it online. But again, also remember, uh, my average loan size is only 45 to 50,000 rupees. And we have customers who have 5,000, 6,000, 10,000 rupees loan also. They are not so computer savvy, etc. So probably even today, 90% of the customers would rather come to the branch to do the loan and pay, rather to transact, rather than sitting at home. But this is a convenience which we have been able to give to the customers so that if there is some lockdown or something, they can transact on. So this is one thing which we were able to do, innovate this during this. Second is uh, uh, some of our other businesses also, we uh, learned to how to collect things, to get things done online. And we were able to also uh, do a lot of uh, uh, upselling, cross-selling, etc. online. But uh, having said all that, our business generally uh, runs on brick and mortar. We have to come to the branch and people feel confident to come to the branch to give their don'ts, etc. The second thing which uh, I was able to understand is uh, probably uh, a, a good part, maybe a third or a, one third of our travels could have been avoided. Visiting, travels, meetings, etc. Now all this, your Google Meet, etc. So nice. Even uh, earlier, we used to we had to go to Bombay for all this investor meet, etc. Now investor meet, uh, they do a video call and uh, that is quite quite effective. Also, you can sit in your office and do it and not have to go to Bombay, etc. Bombay or whatever for that. Of course, that has, uh, that has affected the travel industry and the hospitality industry, but probably they will come up with something else for that. But uh, this is another learning which we are able to do, and that is saving a lot of time. And uh, maybe uh, at, the, uh, at the controlling office, head office, regional office level, uh, we were we, we Today, I feel that uh, uh, we can work with maybe 25% uh, people less also. And uh, effectively, you can work. Uh, many yeah. things you know, sitting here also. And uh, the people on the, the vendor, etc., on the other side also, uh, now feels that actually he should be able to execute an order if it is coming through this uh, online and things. Because if he doesn't do it, uh, the customer may not give that order uh, again. So he also has learned how to do, do quality service quality supply even if it is coming online so because it's a survival if he doesn't do it uh, he will lose that business so for for a customer it is a, for us it is advantageous that uh, next time i can do these things online i don't have to go there i don't have to do these things so all those things are actually changing and uh, people are also changing that's some of the advantages i've seen out of this covid uh, but sure. then I should not be saying, uh, I should not be very happy with this code because there are many other uh, industries and trades, businesses which have really got affected. Okay. And they have still started coming back. See, all these uh, cinema theaters, uh, all these textile shops. No, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how many of these, there are so many textile shops in Kerala. Every, every, everyone is a textile shop or a jewelry shop and cinema theaters, uh, restaurants hotels, uh, resorts, Kerala is full of resorts. All those resorts, nobody is going and people are afraid. So all those people have been much affected. I was telling mainly about our business. Sure. But uh, COVID really affected many of these businesses. There are such a lot of marriages happening. Marriage, you know, today, very convenient. Uh, you call 25 people and you, you invite people and say, okay, my son is getting married. Please send your blessings. Don't come. <laughs> don't send it, don't come. Please send your blessings. Otherwise, you have to actually invite them for the marriage. One right. party, two party, etc. Now you don't have to do it. But then that has also impacted a lot of other businesses. Correct. It is uh, only essential which are now happening. All the other businesses which actually were thriving is not really happening. That is what the second sad part which I want to say. The sure. advantage is that yes, if you say if you earn money and save it and keep it to yourself, the economy won't drive, won't 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 move. I think I don't know. I'm yeah, you're right. Yeah. Layman, yeah. I used to know that uh, uh, the European countries, especially America, they say economy is thriving when the sales increases, 
when the when the sales in the shop because they have the control of this because everything is done through cards and credit etc they know if there is uh, sales if there is purchase in the, then they feel that the economy is happening so if everybody nobody is spending uh, the economy is not driving that's what the european countries so here we have not reached that stage but then here what is happening is many people many businesses were dependent on people who has to, who were spending if the spending is not there many businesses will come down means it will take time for them to it's not that you need only food and water etc to live you need many you, you have been used to many other things also. right Not essentials right. that's right. a sad part of it <laughs> right right mr so john uh, business is a spiritual journey apart from uh, you know taking care of a lot of things uh, on a day to day way mentally and spiritually also you have to evolve how did you transform as a person over the last many years spiritually uh, and what were the changes which come to, came to you as a person over the last 20 25 years how did you evolve and how did your idea about people about the community about the business changed over the last many years so it was it was a lovely discussion with you uh, mr muthut i mean you shared lot about your business you shared lot about how the business have grown over the past many many years the challenges and the culture about the trust factor about building a brand and about handling such large transactions with ease and using technology and the importance of gold in the portfolio i am sure there was a lot of learning and of course the most important was the focus on your core business i mean even though if it's not very glamorous if it's uh, it's profitable and it's helping people and it's solving a customer problem focusing on your core business is so important so i think it was a wonderful discussion with you over the last 35 40 minutes and i thoroughly enjoyed the discussion with you and i was and i'm extremely thankful to you that you shared things very candidly with all of us and i'm sure the the entire community of treasury elite uh, it's almost 35 to 40000 people would definitely uh, benefit from this conversation thank you once again and thanks for your time